Road Trip. So where did my obsession, my deep addiction to snakehead fishing start? Well, it actually happened on camera here on Hook Shots a handful of years ago down in South Florida when I caught my first ever bullseye snake. I mean, that fish exploded on that so hard. And considering that these are one of the most hated invasive species in this country, a lot of you are probably gonna roll your eyes when I say, catching that fish, man, it changed something in my head. Now, while we don't have bullseyes here in the Northeast, even back then, I knew that we had Northern snakeheads here in the Northeast, and I never messed with them. But after catching those fish, after watching how they stalk a bait, how they blow up on a frog, I came home and just went all in, man. And ever since, I have just had this sick devotion to chasing snakeheads. Roy Rogers, what? The only thing that could make this Roy Rogers better is if I wasn't sitting here alone eating it. Hashtag Lonely Roy Rogers. Now, I've posted a thousand snakehead shots. I've written about snakeheads in Field and Stream. And what I've noticed over the years since I started doing that was that there are a lot of you out there who are also members of this snakehead cult. And considering that to date, I have not put a northern snakehead on camera for hook shots, I decided that a little road trip was in order. So here we are, hotel number one in Somewheresville, Virginia, not gonna say exactly where. Kinda Richmondy, sorta DC-ish, general vicinity, but I'm not gonna blow up the spot. All you need to know is that tomorrow at 5.30 a.m. I am meeting my boy Jacob Nixon from the YouTube channel Geek on the Water and his buddy Josh Dolan, and them boys is taking me somewhere they refer to as Jurassic Park. Oh my God, flip it around. And you're not wearing yours today? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I've known for a long time that Nixon had the snake book. So this is only my second year of fishing for snakehead. I'm ate up with it now. I'm wanting to go any spot I can get to him. Starburst, what are you, five? <laughs> that eat. The explosion at the boat, it's what the whole day's about. But what I did not realize until I met this dynamic duo is that their hearts lie in slightly different places when they're fishing the swamps. Everybody loves snakeheads. Jacob loves snakeheads. All my friends love snakeheads. Bowfin are where it's at. Pure American muscle, that's what you want. Don't worry about snakes. Go after some bowfin. Is that what you're looking for? Yes. Now, as we've already noted, okay, snake guys are pretty tight-lipped about their spots. So while I can't say exactly where we were, what I can tell you is cruising to the area that Josh and Jacob wanted to fish, I was blown away by just how vast and beautiful and seemingly unspoiled it was. So why do we fish this spot? What is special about this spot? You know, when I was messaging Joe about it and telling him to come down, I kind of sold it as Jurassic Park because it's out there. It's not one of those spots you can just pull up on a ramp and get there. In this spot, there also isn't as many fish, I don't think, at least our success with them, um, but they seem to be bigger. Oh! Oh! oh. Mm, mother You know, Jacob called me at 3.30 this morning. Um, I had two hours of sleep. But, uh, much like Jacob, I came into the day with uh, very high hopes and unwavering optimism on what the day was going to bring us. Right there. Oh, heads up. Now the thing about snakehead fishing, and I don't really care where you're doing it, is that you can't ever really stop paying attention. You can grind all day, and if you're not keeping your eye on that frog or whatever you're throwing, you're going to miss the bite. You know, a lot of times you don't see that wake. These fish surprise you. And every time you miss, you think, God, if I just had one more chance, I would do that better and I'd connect. It is sticky, hot, and sweaty back here. There are thunderstorms inbound. It's like, how long do we stay here in Jurassic Park? We've gotten eyes on one snake uh, and had some other random hits that could have been. You know, Jacob and Joe, um, I could see they were kind of wavering as the day went on. Call this shot, Jacob looking tense. Well, this is hook shots. You know, Joe's going to make a video whether you catch him or not. And uh, I'm getting a little nervous that the day keeps going on. This is supposed to be Jurassic Park, but right now it's like the, what is that, third sequel? Jurassic World? Something. And we grounded out and grounded out, 
kicking up mud, trying to get into every creek that we could. So why are we running with no cowling? Simple throttle cable issue. Is my boat reliable? Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> don't do this. Nothing to do with me is reliable. So we're getting later in the day, and it happens. I'm throwing a little Stanley Ribbit frog, and it just gets hammered. Big bow fin. But it's the wrong species. Now I gotta tell you, I am equally obsessed with bow fins as I am snakeheads, and a lot of times you find both in the same area. <laughs> yeah! America's about bow fin. Fat bow fin, right around six pounds. Thought that was the big snake, but hey listen, if you follow me on hook shots, man, you know I'm not sad about that. So when that bowfin hit, um, you know, we had a tide swing and uh, it kind of gave us a little bit of a light bulb that maybe these fish were getting ready to turn back on. You're fishing tidal water for these snakehead. You've got a small window. And yeah, you can catch them all day, but it's the best window that I think you can catch them in is the outgo tide. And we pounded and we pounded. We went back to spots that we had been at on a lower tide stage three and four times. And in the back of our heads we're going, storms are coming, storms are coming, tick tock. So we went out here into Jurassic Park to look for these huge snakehead. I tried to be the optimistic dude all day, but as we were getting to kind of the closing moments of the day and, and really our last few feet of the bank that we had to fish, things were not looking good. And Josh says, okay, we're gonna finish this bank and then we're gonna get out of here. And two seconds later, he's like, I see one. And then, bam! Freaking Josh hooks up. The bowfin fan, whatever he is. Rolling, 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 good fish. Come on, Jacob, come on, come on, come on. See, he's got one little hook in him. Don't flip him, don't flip him, don't flip him. Yeah! Yes! Woo! Oh my God, I had just turned this GoPro off before that hit. Oh. You guys don't know how hard we have worked for this fish. And even though Josh is a little bit more into bowfins and snakes, yo, it was his personal best snake, which was like a nice little cherry on top. We fished our asses off all day looking for one freaking snakehead. This fish is a little bit over six pounds. It's my new personal best. A fish is a fish to get a fish in the boat. That's all I need. But I also didn't get Joe skunked on hook shots. <laughs> so I think Nixon was a little bummed that we didn't catch more fish. But I was like, yo, dude, look, we got a nice snake out of your spot. And the first northern snakehead ever put on camera in hook shots is taken by the bowfin guy. I identify as male, M-A-I-L, because all I do is send it. What's up, everybody? You might not know it, but I've kind of gotten eaten up with snakehead fishing, too. You know, all that frog smash is pretty awesome. Part of my motivation is that they're goddamn delicious. You know, we happen to have this snake on ice here. You know, a uh, tiny little five pounder that JC caught yesterday. No big deal or nothing. So I thought this was the perfect opportunity to show you how to fillet and cook one of these delicious invasives. So first off, this fish was bled out right away as soon as it was caught and kept on ice all night. So while filleting a snakehead isn't much different than filleting any other fish, I recommend a fillet glove because they're slimy as hell and slippery dippery. First step, flip up the peck fin and make a cut diagonally from the belly up to the back of the head. Next step, follow the backbone with the tip of your knife, making a nice slice all the way down to the tail. From here, follow the backbones till you're all the way through down to the tail. Flip the fish over and repeat those same steps on side two. Now, all you have to do is skin your fillets, but the only thing is, Snakeheads do have a row of pin bones at the thick end of the fillet that you're going to want to take out. Now, we're ready to cook. But if you want to learn EK's secret snakehead recipe, you're just going to have to tune in to chapter two of the snakehead road trip. I have such a score to settle here. So the next morning, I get up at the ass crack of dawn and I start making my way to the Potomac River just south of Washington, D.C., to meet my good friend and Field and Stream contributor, Pete Robbins. Wake up, sunshine. Now, I have to backtrack for a second in regards to the Potomac, okay? 
The first snake I ever caught was on camera in Miami. But the first time I ever tried to catch one was the year before that episode right here on the Potomac. And what we were treated to was the most horrific June cold front like in the history of June. And the closest we came to catching a snakehead was seeing one finning on top of a grass mat. Oh, sweet God. If he doesn't eat it, you're gonna snag him. Now that I know so much more about catching snakeheads, I've got a serious score to settle here. Now here's the funny thing about Pete Robbins. Dude doesn't really give a damn about a snakehead. I fished bass tournaments for 20 years, and when you're doing that, all you really care about is catching bass. You could get into a school of stripers, you could, we've caught bluefish out here, anything else is just kind of garbage. But, but here's the deal, when you catch them, you're usually catching them in places where you'd catch a bass. It's the thickest cover, it's an explosive topwater strike. So when you actually look at them on their merits empirically, it's a pretty awesome, they're actually a little better than bass, don't tell anyone I said that. But last summer, he threw up a post on Facebook saying he's got a buddy coming down who wants to catch snakes. Can any of you snake guys give me some information? And I provided a little bit of information. Clifford caught a 13, an 11, I had a 9 and a smaller one, and it was just awesome. And I said, yo, dude, next time I come down there, whether you like it or not, you're my effing snake guy now. <laughs> come on, man. Where are you taking me, dude? Larry, Pete. Right off the bat, Joe Wax the best. He had told me, he's like, if you go out trying to catch snakehead, you're gonna have the best bass day of your life. After he catches that one, releases it, oh. boom, I catch one. Okay. World's worst snakehead, guys. <laughs> Such vivid memories of the agony in this particular creek. Agony. And this is deja vu, right? Because the last time that I filmed here, the only thing that saved the shoot from being a complete flop was the fact that at least we were catching largemouth when we were not catching snakeheads. And after spending a couple hours not doing anything really but watching Pete pop largemouth. Damn it! <laughs> I finally get that touchdown hit back in the grass. It had the right suck. And I totally f***ed up. I, I know Joe had a tough trip the last time he was here and I was worried because I, I catch one or two almost every time out, but I don't really target them. And all of a sudden I have one smoke my buzz bait. <laughs> I've never been so happy for a little snakehead in my life. <laughs> I don't know how big he was, three, four pounds, but I was thrilled. It was the most, it was the biggest weight off my shoulders you can possibly imagine. It's 11.40 in the morning. Well, Maybe I can eat something now. <laughs> We're gonna keep going, man. And I'm pumped because I feel like I am this close to my Potomac revenge. And it would have meant so much to me to get it before I moved on to my next location. And to find out if I achieve that before heading back to South Jersey to fly fish for snakes, you, my friends, are gonna have to tune in to part two. Jump up and down. Let's move Snakeheads are that fancy looking salsa dance that everybody loves and he's frilly and he goes, he nips at the frogs and they don't eat. Don't mess with snakeheads. Don't follow the fad.